first, I want to thank everybody for, for joining us today, um, our panelists, our attendees. Um, I'm Roger Paxton. I'll be your host. I'm a co-host of Free Talk Live and also the host of the Lava Flow podcast. Um, so there will be a Q&A session toward the end of this webinar, the last 15 minutes or so. There is a section in the Zoom chat where you can put in your questions, um, and we will try to get to all of those uh, toward the end of the, the webinar, but make sure to get your questions in early. Um, the sooner you get them in, the better. I'm going to introduce you to uh, these two gentlemen. First of all, they are with um, a Fortune Law Firm, Fortune DNA. It's a 28-year national conglomerate encompassed, encompassing legal, tax, financial, and business consulting professionals, so a huge conglomerate with hundreds of years of combined experience. Fortune DNA acquires the very finest professional services, allowing the consumer to create wealth while protecting it at the very same time. Their CEO, Nick Fortune, is an inventor and intellectual creator for many asset protection and wealth strategy uh, patents. Nick is an expert in evaluating complex macroeconomic legal issues and developing complex strategies for his clients. He's a frequent guest on a variety of talk and news shows as well, and they have a YouTube channel uh, that you might want to check out as well. So Nick, I'm going to go and hand this off to you. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for uh, having us. I'm here with uh, my good friend and partner, Zach Perry, who's one of the best attorneys around. Uh, we love him and uh, happy. We're going to, we're going to blow your, uh, we're going to blow your listeners socks off today. Give I'm looking them forward to it. Yeah. So, you know, we talked a little bit in the intro um, about some things. It's, it's amazing when you get some information and you see some of how the other side lives and you realize that things aren't necessarily locked down to the ultra wealthy, but those that are in the know. And if you know where to go and who to go to, uh, those doors can be opened and all these types of products and services and vehicles that you hear about all these guys on TV and the news and whatever all using, uh, you can do, which will allow you to put a whole lot more money in your pocket and less than Uncle Sam's. Well, that's important. And I'm certainly not a member of that ultra wealthy for sure. So I'm really excited to, uh, to learn some of this for my own uh, pur purposes as well. Um, so we've kind of talked about Fortune Law Firm and, and, and um, who you guys are. But what kind of things do you do exactly? That's a good question. So we do... It's hard to fit it in one category, but it has to do with asset protection. We do business structures, wealth preservation, estate planning, advanced tax strategies. We do everything we can to make sure that people can keep as much money in their own pocket. And one thing we like to say is you earn the money and we'll help you keep it. Nice. Yeah, we do business in all 50 states. So everywhere your listeners are, we are. We also are able to do business in 44 various different countries out there. I mean, not the, the weird outlier ones, but basically anywhere there's a decent population and a good economy, we have relations and we can work with. So that's why it's great. So we're, we're everywhere that they are and uh, their clients and their people and whatever. And so what we what we really wanted to do when we created this was we, you know, there is definitely a distinct um, difference between the way that somebody say wealthy grows up and the average Joe, right? A lot of these things we're going to talk about, they're just innate when you're wealthy. I mean, you you grow up with them. It's just expected you're going to do them. You know, it's there. There is no guess or is this legal? Can we do it? Does the IRS know about it? All that stuff. It's just they take it and they run with it. And then you what we what we saw was a great disadvantage between the average wealthy and the average Joe and saying, look, we want to be able to take these programs that have been available and accessible and affordable to the ultra wealthy and make them available and accessible and affordable to everybody. Why not? Why shouldn't everybody be able to take advantage of some of these amazing programs that the wealthy did to get to where they are and allows them to stay where they are and make it so that we create an entirely level playing field. And that's what we've been able to do. In fact, your listeners may remember in 2012, Warren Buffett boasted, that he made a billion dollars, but he paid less in taxes than a secretary. And many wow. of your listeners may have done the same thing I did and go to your CPA and say, hey, he's paying only this much taxes. What, how do I do that? And if they're like me, the CPA said, well, you can't do that. Well, the truth is the CPA was wrong. You can do that. The CPA just doesn't know how, but Warren Buffett knows how. And that's really the premise behind what we're doing is we are taking these strategies of the ultra wealthy like Warren Buffett and teaching 
uh, everyday Joes that it can work for them too. What are the, that program that that exactly what Zach brought up brought up about making a billion dollars and paying less tax than their secretary? We're going to talk about today. I think it's going to come up. It always seems to come up. We're happy to talk about it. Of course, everybody wants to know. So, you know, we want to show them and uh, we're going to talk about it. I know we're going to hit it here later today. So stay tuned, guys. You guys are going to be, like I said, socks blown off and uh, moving forward. And mine's so. blown. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're going to get to that because that's a fascinating topic to me, how somebody like he and, and Bill Gates and all of these other ultra wealthy people, even people who were not born into into wealth, like Bill Gates, for example, they still somehow find a way to, to make these things happen. So if they can find a way, then surely all of us can. And apparently that's what you guys are doing for us. So, so that's great. Um, can you give us an example of um, you know, on your website, I've read about some what they call advanced tax strategies. Can you give us some examples of some of that? Yeah. So we start from the premise that uh, taxes kill, right? It's something we're familiar with. The IRS, the government, they tax us when we earn money. They tax us when we save money, when we invest money. They tax us when we retire. And heck, after we kick the bucket, they'll still be taxing us because they tax us when we die. So that's the premise we start from is that, hey, we're all getting taxed. We're getting overtaxed. And no one likes to pay too much in taxes, right? <clears throat> got, to, got to deal with the tax issue. You know, a lot of people focus on their return, but the reason why they have to pay so much attention to the return is because they're getting killed on taxes. Now, what if you can create things that were taxable events and legally and lawfully make them non-taxable events? What if you can recharacterize money? What if you can legally, through the IRS, change the status of the money so that no longer you were put in a position where as you accumulate wealth, you're just going to pay more and more taxes on a higher amount. Right. And, and a lot of people don't realize that, I mean, it, you're, for the listeners out there, how many of you guys have an IRA, a 401k, a 403b, right? A 457, a pension plan, a something, right? Yeah. And what people don't realize is that 401k is section 401.k of the Internal Revenue Code. It was never built as a retirement plan for you, it was created as an annuity for the government. So think about it this way, Roger, you take $50,000 that a client makes, he's, or he can put into a plan, right? He's at a 25% tax bracket. He gets to deduct roughly around $12,000. He's still gonna pay tax on the other 38. So the IRS is still gonna get some money today. And then he says, Roger, take that $12,000 and put it into a plan, grow it into a million dollars and then when you get old, we're going to come back to you for 40, 50% of it. And you right. thought that was a great deal. Yeah, no, not, not for me. No bueno. That doesn't work for me and our clients. You want to get off that bus and start creating non-taxable events. You work for the money. You earn the money. You deserve to keep the money. But in order to do that, it causes you to have to be proactive and take advantage. You cannot wait. You got to get on it and transform that money. Otherwise, you're always going to be in that situation. People think, you, oh, go ahead, Zach. People think when they retire, they're going to be in a lower tax bracket. That's kind of the rationale behind doing a 401k, right? I'm going to, I'm going to take the, the benefit now and pay taxes later because when I retire, I'll be in a lower tax bracket. Well, there are a couple of problems with that. Number one, if you're in a lower tax bracket when you retire, then you've done something wrong, right? No one wants to be living high when they're 65 and then when they're 65 one day, all of a sudden they take a huge pay cut and then have to pay taxes on it. The second problem with that thinking is that people forget that the tax deductions that they enjoy during their working life, the interest they're paying on their mortgage, the business tax deductions while they're working, the children, the, all those are gone when you retire. And so you're going to be paying your pure tax rate. You're not going to, there aren't, there's not going to be near as much available for you to lower your tax rate. So you're going to be, you're going to be taxed even higher when you retire than, and that's when you need the money the most. Yeah. You sold your business, your mortgage is paid off. The kids are all grown. And yet you still need the same. I mean, if that's your lifestyle, that's your lifestyle. That's the money you need. And so you people now make the same amount of money that they did before, only they don't have the deductions. They actually end up paying more in tax. And we want people to get off that bus and look at things through a different set of lens where they have a different paradigm and can get an idea of of what really works and uh, a smart way to invest, so to speak. So to answer your question directly, you said, can you give us an example of an advanced tax strategy? There's something that we call an investment grade insurance contract. It's an investment grade insurance contract or IGIC. So that's one vehicle that we use. And what that allows people to do is take anything that they're already investing in, 
whether it's stocks, whether it's real estate, you know, flipping or wholesaling, long-term renting, rent, you know, rental income, whether it's cryptocurrency, Star Wars action figures, whatever they're investing in, they can invest in those exact same things, same risk, same amount of money, same returns, but the difference is the vehicle through which you invest. Because if you just use your own money, you're going to pay taxes on the gains. If you invest through the investment grade insurance contract, you don't pay taxes on the, the gains. And so the important question for your viewers is, why would you ever invest in anything taxed when you can invest in those same things tax-free? So that's one of those advanced tax strategies we're talking same about. Same amount of money, same amount of time, same return, same risk, but you get to keep it all. Now that's what makes sense. Now I'm willing to bet, I'm willing to play a game with you. I'm willing to bet you have some kind of retirement account somewhere or you can make up one that you do but uh I do, I yes. everybody seems to have this account when they they left the business right or you know they worked someplace else they moved it over they converted to an ira maybe they left it there whatever they might have a few from a few different jobs so let's let's play let's do an avatar let's play let's play a scenario right because there's nothing better than that and you would say we've never talked to you before right we've never been able to figure out okay so let's Let's do it just like we were sitting down with a client. So where is your money? What do you have? If you don't want let's to play say, it, Yeah, let's say I've got $300,000 sitting in a 401k from a company that I used to work for. Okay, so fantastic. So it chances are you're with a major brokerage house or your 401k was. So yes, Fidelity, yes. Charles Schwab, Amer Ameriprise, something like that, right? And they're never going to let you take your money and put it into a position where you can invest in something where they don't make a commission. So in order to get it to where you can do this program, we're going to set up what they call a structured account. And it's going to allow you to move that money over assets in kind or like kind transfer from qualified to qualified and move over where it doesn't create a taxable event. There's no fines. There's no penalties. The SEC signs off on it and allows you now to put that money in a place where now you can govern and decide what you want to do for an investment. Now what we do is we go to the IRS and we say, you know what? Roger doesn't want to be with Fidelity or any of these guys anymore. He wants to create his own fund. We're going to create the Paxson Fund, okay? And so what happens is, that. right, so we need a special entity, just like you would see a fund on TV or a fund that you would invest in yourself. It's got to go through that whole same process where special entity, special tax ID, special subscription agreement, operating agreement, the whole nine yards. And the IRS says, okay, great, but there's no money in here. We got to capitalize this entity. Otherwise you don't have any money to invest with. So we create a par value of the shares and we say, okay, there's 300,000 shares outstanding. You see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. At a dollar a share. And now a wire is cut or a check, excuse me, a check is cut or wire is transferred. Now 300,000 shows up in this brand new entity. You look around, you're the one that's the fiduciary. You're the one that's the fund manager. And if you go walk across the street and you get hit by a car, there's nobody to run the fund. So it's a good idea the entity decides it wants to go ahead and key man insure you, okay? Now I gotta tell you right off the bat, I hate life insurance. I hate it. My clients hate life insurance. In fact, I don't even, call it life insurance. we don't even call it life insurance. We call it death insurance, right? <laughs> right. Because 98% because of the way that that these programs are set up, the only people that benefit from it are the people that when you die, you leave that money to your spouse or a loved one or a charity or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we want to benefit from this today. So what we want to do, we want to use insurance. You got to tell them about the banana peels. Oh yeah. Yeah. When I got a big old policy on me, I'm going to tell you what happens. You start getting banana peels on the uh, staircase. And my wife telling me it's okay to run the car in the garage with the door down, you know, all kinds of weird stuff starts happening. Right. No, but, but seriously, so because that's normally how it's always worked. Now, I want to use insurance as a tool. I want to use it for the same reason Warren Buffett bought AIG. I want to take that 300000 and I want to buy the least amount of insurance that I need to, just enough to wrap that $300,000 to recharacterize that money through the IRS and allow it so that it goes into the program. It's literally available to you within two days. It's completely liquid. 
It has a contracted rate of return. You cannot lose your principal. You're contracted on a rate. It's available to invest in anything you want to. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate. No prohibited transactions. No prohibited transactions, unlike a self-directed or anything like that. You can put that money into it. You want to go invest in whatever you can. You want to go on a trip, you can. Buy a car, you can. You can do anything. It's your money. It's a glorified account. But when you do pick an investment, and you do make that investment and it does produce a profit, anything that you invest in and the returns from anything that you invest into come back 100% tax-free. And why? Because under the tax code and why a lot of people don't know this, insurance contracts don't pay tax, period. Wow. It's built in straight in whole sections of the internal revenue code. And people think that they're getting around this that they're somehow getting past the IRS or some government regulatory or somebody doesn't get this. You can't do this program unless the IRS signs off on it. The SEC has to give its pledge. The IRS has to sign off on it. The insurance commission has to approve it. You have all these regulatory bodies that no matter what, you have to go get it approved before you can ever get it. And here's a couple great things. We're gonna hit even more, but here's a few. When you rolled your money in that 300,000, your qualified status is arrested. Your RMDs, your required minimum distribution is arrested. When you take that 300,000 and you grow it into a million dollars, that million dollars growth is all 100% tax free. Now you're going to say, well, what happens when I retire? Don't I have to pay my taxes? I mean, I did defer the money. Yes, you do. When you're either 70 and a half years old or 72 years old based on the structure act that's getting ready hopefully to pass where they extend you extended when you would have to take your RMDs under the law you have to take 3.8% out of your program so i don't know if you have a calculator there but 300,000 times 3.8% i don't know if you want to so that's 3.8% that of the 300,000 <laughs> yeah. not the million dollar growth just yeah the, the so structure. you have to take 3.8% of 300,000 and let's just say you've got it locked in a program and it's paying you 6.1%. So that's like 11 grand. Right. So you've got, you owe, so you've got a million dollars earning you 6.1% or $61,000 a year, paying the tax on the 300,000 of about 11,000. What else is great about this, Roger, is most people have their, their, their retirement in play. They, it's made up of retirement properties, right? Mm -hmm. Investment properties. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds, whatever. And in order, when they're 72, and a, 72 years old and they've got to take their money, they have to liquidate their stock positions. They have to sell their homes, right? They have to sell their homes, get $50,000 so that you can pay $20,000 to the man and live on 30 grand, right? But you have, to, you have to now liquidate the position that you may have wanted to pass those properties on. You may have wanted to pass on that Amazon stock or that you know, IBM stock or whatever it is, right? But you have to liquidate it. Now you're in a situation where because you're earning 6.1, let's say on the whole, the earnings of the interest rate on the whole is more than enough to pay the interest on the part on the tax side that you don't have to liquidate stocks. The interest from the account pays the tax on the RMDs. So what does that mean? It means your retirement lasts longer and every dollar in there is engaged 100% tax-free. Wow. It's great. So, you know, one, one thing you mentioned to me, and of course we all hate taxes, like you said earlier, and, and that, that, so this is huge for everybody. But another thing you mentioned there that really struck me was you said that you never can lose that original principal, that $300,000, for example. Yep. How is that possible? So if I invest in IBM stock today and IBM stock goes down tomorrow, I've lost part of that principal. That's what we're trying to tell people is that when you eat on one side, if you have an IRA or a 401k, you could lose all your money tomorrow. There's no guarantees, right? You have no guarantees. There's no fail safe. There's no backup plan. It's gone. But if you take your money and you roll it into this program, because ultimately what you did was you pledged new capital into the insurance contract. They went and took that money and they leveraged it. So they're making money on their money. Don't get me wrong. Everybody's making money on this baby, including you. And so because of that, they said, Hey, look, because you put in Roger 300,000, this is your contracted rate. Now you want to take it out. That's on you. Whether you take it out or not, it's yours. In fact, 
if you invest with it, even though the money has been removed out of the plan to go into a house or to buy a stock, you keep getting paid on that investment as if it never left. And on top of that, the return on whatever you invested into. So because it's contracted out, it's different. It's not like a regular old insurance policy. And it's not like these things that you hear called infinite banking or IBCs that uh, be your own bank, bank on yourself or all these right. things that you hear mostly that was created by Nelson Nash. This is the original program. This is the program before IBC got a hold of it. Nelson Nash was a forester out, wanted, wanted to get out of the business, went into the insurance business, found this in the tax code and took this existing plan. This it's, he didn't create this program. This program already existed. And what they did was they took a perfectly fantastic plan that was really built for the consumer, low cost, easy to use, easy to get into, easy to navigate. And they wanted to find a way that their insurance providers could make massive commissions selling IBCs. And so it is vastly different. And I want to get into that later, how different they are, because it's not like night and day different. It's like night to night and day a week from now different. Anybody that has an IBC will roll their plan into this in a heartbeat when they see the differences and the benefits of it because quite frankly, it's superior. Interesting. So, you know, I'm, none of us are getting any younger. I'm 43 now. When is it too late? Is it too late for me to, to be involved in this and still make a, make a killing? It sounds like what you're talking about here. How does Probably, that work? I would have to say our best coin has been a 19 and a half year old that came in. And then you can do this program all the way up until you're 70 and a half years old. Um, but that doesn't even exclude you because there's three pieces to the pillar. You have the insured, you have the beneficiary, and you have the owner of the policy. So let's just say you were the owner, but you're old or you're unhealthy. Okay. Well, you can insure your spouse. You can insure a kid, a grandkid, somebody else, right? So you could be the owner. Uh, they could be the insured and you can be the beneficiary or somebody else. It doesn't matter. But quite frankly, a lot of times people do get older and they've collected up quite a, quite a pot of cash. But because they're older, there's things that go along with that. And some of that is the fact that your health deteriorates. And so, you know, sometimes you need to do, uh, go at it about a different way. And we always tell people, it doesn't matter how you skin the cat. At the end of the day, we just want the cat skin. So if we need to use somebody else, then we'll do that. And people are more than happy to volunteer. We see that in the families all the time. Yeah. So, you know, what, what you're talking about seems great, but how did this get started? I mean, who started this? Why did it get started? Um, or is this just something that somebody stumbled across in the tax code one day? So what's the story? Well, the tax code really is the answer, right? And uh, who wrote the tax code? It was Congress, right? right. Why, why did they write the tax code in such a way? Well, here's how it started, okay? This is the best part, Roger. This really is the best part. So you have senators, you have House of Representatives, and they want they want a good plan, right? They, they want something that applies to them that that they can use. They wanted something that's asset protected. They wanted something that wouldn't lose their principal. They wanted a way to be able to invest tax-free. They wanted something with, with living benefits, with the death benefit. You know, They wanted their cake and they wanted to be able to eat it too. And so they, they wrote the tax code in such a way, not necessarily, that, you know, they didn't advertise this. This isn't something that you hear when they're you know, running for re-election, these wonderful things they built into the plan for themselves, but they wrote it into the tax code and they wrote it so they could take advantage of the plan. And in fact, Part of the beauty of this, the fact that, you know, we know how this works and we've read the tax code, people will ask, well, what are the risks of, of Congress changing this? You know, if I get into this plan, is it going to change? You know, when I get to retirement, are the rules going to change and now I'm going to have to pay tax on this money? Well, the answer to that question is the same as the answer to what you just asked. If the senators and the members of the House of Representatives are creating this plan for themselves, what do you think the chances are they're going to do it? How many times has Congress voted for them to get a pay cut, or for them to get less? <laughs> and never where. It doesn't happen. Yeah, so I mean, they, you're thinking about a group of people that are like, hey, how do we create the most awesome plan for us, right? And the fact that somebody else might read this down the way and benefit from it. See, people don't understand this isn't geared just towards them. This is a part of the tax code. It's just that you have to be able to understand it and people will say, well, why haven't I ever heard about this before? 
Well, number one, you got to understand the law. You got to be able to do the tax and understand and be a firm. You got to be able to understand structures and you have to be able to have an insurance license. So a lot of people say, well, I'm going to take this back and go to my attorney. He can't do it. I'm going to take it back to my CPA. My dad's a CPA. He can figure out. It's not possible. He can't do it either. In fact, insurance agents can't do it, nor do they want to because they're too busy selling all these programs like these IBCs where they're making 106% of people's first year premiums and they don't want this little wrapper on this money. That, see, we're not insurance guys, okay? We're, we're, we're not an insurance firm. We are a structure firm first and foremost. We do asset protection, estate planning, entity formation. You heard all the accolades in the beginning. This is a value added program. So if you come to me and you're an investor and we only have about 45,000 of those as clients and you say, I'd like to do more, I wanna do things better, I wanna save more money, then we're going to create a tailor-made, individually built structure or program for you. And this might be a tool that you need to use. And because of that, we want to get it created up as fast as we can so that the client can be out there utilizing it for their game plan. They're trying to sell it as a part of putting food on the table. They're never going to walk away from those kind of massive commissions to do what's best for the client. And I love when people say that anyways. I do the very best thing for my client, which is Latin for, I do the best thing for my client so long as it's something that I sell. If the best right. thing for the client is across the street, they won't send you across the street. And because we don't do investments, Roger, we don't care what they do. I don't care if somebody does stock or real estate or whatever, but by golly, if you're gonna do it, number one rule, don't lose money. Mm -hmm. Number two rule, do it in the most tax efficient way. I mean, you risk the capital, keep it. Why not, right? So that's, that's kind of our philosophy. It's done well for us. And you'd be surprised. Most people get their marketing online or do other things. We actually get our, our new clients from referrals. I mean, most of all our business is happy people that we took and turned into a walking billboard that actually knows what they have. They know how it works in all facets of our business. And they're walking billboards. They talk to people all the time because in this business, people are so interested in just pushing things down your throat. You have entities, you have structure, you have different things. They don't work together. They don't talk together and they're just stuff. And Roger, I, I bet you're willing to, to agree with this, that you go to your lawyer and he tells you one thing. You go to your CPA, he tells you something else. Of you go to your financial planner, <laughs> he tells you something else. And now the poor client analysis paralysis does nothing. They're the ones that suffer. Imagine if you can come to a firm where all the tax, the structure, the whole program is all in one, everybody's on the same page, and all you got to think about is finding that investment or doing that deal that makes the most sense for you, rather than trying to figure out and get yourself through this whole mess. So explain this to me. I, you know, I consider myself a pretty smart fellow. I understand 401ks, I understand 403bs, you know, I understand IRAs, Roth or otherwise. I get that. But why have I never heard of anything like this? Why has nobody ever told me about this before? Well, I think one quick answer is the fact that you have to have all the licenses. You can't offer it unless you can do all those things. So there's no point because even if somebody wanted it, you couldn't fulfill it for them. Number one. Um, number two is, like I said, people don't want to get off the fact that they can make massive commissions selling other products. And quite frankly, look, we've got people brainwashed that, you know, they follow dad and, and granddad. I mean, I'm from Chicago. I, my, my parent, you know, my grandparents, Inland Steel, Bethlehem Steel, I'm self-made. You know, you can't, I couldn't learn this in my family. I actually had to attach to wealthy people to, to realize that they just do things different. But grandpa all the way to pop says, hey, you go work for a company, you go participate in their 401k. Everybody, that's what they do, like robots. And, you know, because Roger, we don't teach financial literacy in this country. No, we think, do not. Think about it. You, where do you learn how money works? Where do you learn how investments work? I mean, Christ, I even went to school, but where in school do they even teach you? Even if even if this it's brass tax and by the time you get out, you're you're outdated. Things that people were investing four years ago, they're not investing in now. So uh, it just it it changes, and you know I wish pe more people would do it, but you're not going to get them to walk away from those huge commissions to unfortunately do what's right with their client. And you know, Roger, we make our money elsewhere. So if this is a program that 
people listening want to participate in, we're more than happy to do that with them with the idea that we're going to create some kind of relationship down the road with them. You, you really need a kind of a unique blend, like a recipe for this to be something that someone proposes, right? One advantage that people have coming to our firm is that we don't sell a particular product, right? We're not attached to a certain plan or product. Like if you were to go into Edward Jones or Morgan Stanley, mm -hmm. they're going to have the greatest product in the world. And, and they're going to sell you a, an Edward Jones product or a Morgan Stanley product. It's like when you walk into Starbucks, you're surprised when they sell you a cup of coffee. No, because that's what they sell. And so Morgan Stanley, these financial planners, uh, they're not going to offer you this because it's not something, number one, that they're really aware of. And e even if they were, they would be disincentivized to recommend it because they would make no money off of it. And so for the, a plan like this, like you mentioned, it's something that requires knowledge in a number of different disciplines, the law, tax, life insurance, financial sector, all that stuff, right? And so we have the licenses and we have the knowledge and only with that special blend is anyone ever going to recommend that to you? Because otherwise they're not going to make money off of it. And I know a lot of people out there are saying, well, I can just take my IRA or 401k and convert it to a Roth. And if you do, you're going to get tagged on huge taxes. And let's just say you have it in a Roth. You're still subject to the volatility of the market. Right. I mean, are, are we pretending that we don't have a recession in this country about every 10 years, that the average recession is not 43% on an average and has been since what, 1871? Every nine, every nine point something years, okay? So the fact that people, I, I mean, look, if you had your money with, oh, let's pick a little company, Bear Stern, Lehman Brothers, back, back in 2008, right? You know, 1,311 institutions filed bankruptcy because they were 22 times over leverage what the Federal Reserve allowed them to be, right? And so if you said, hey, you know what? I don't believe that that real estate doubles every six months, remember that crazy time? Oh, yeah. Or that the stocks were so far over leveraged? You know, I'm gonna take my money, I'm gonna be smart. I wanna be conservative. I'm gonna put my money in bonds. I'm gonna put my money in cash, right? Well, what happened is because those companies were so over leveraged, that when they filed bankruptcy because they went insolvent, you only got 70, 17 cents on the dollar 19 months later. Now, the government went ahead and picked the winners from the losers, didn't they? They decided who was going to stay in business. And now all that money that was lost came back, right? The markets are doing really good. And your stockbroker that said buy low and sell high didn't pick up and call any of your listeners and tell them to sell two weeks ago, did they? because they didn't really mean buy low and sell high. They meant buy low and sell never. Why didn't they call your clients and say, hey, this is the highest the stock market has ever been in the world. Why don't you take your chips off the table? And I mean, completely out of the market and let the market correct itself. And then when it does, sure, you might miss a couple points bump in the stock market, but you'll be able to buy real estate and stock and all these things at all time discounts because they're gonna get whacked from an upcoming recession or a change in the economy from bull to bear. Right. And so what we're telling people is, look, you can't be the last one without a chair when the music stops. You don't know when this is going to happen, but we know that it's going to happen. You got Brexit. You got the issue going banging it out with China. Huh? You got an impeachment deal. You got <clears throat> Senate and Congress that can't get along. You got, we're whacking it out with Turkey now. You got Iran. You got... Russia, you've got $77 trillion of unfunded liabilities, $22, $23 trillion in debt, pension funds in places where you were talking about where you grow up, they're, they're, they're in almost insolvent. Yeah. I mean, places back home for me with my, my, my family members, their pensions are almost liquidated. There's nothing there. I mean, you people need to get a clue and say, look, I'm going to take my money and I'm going to get it completely out of the market because- Charles Schwab and Ameriprise and all these companies, they're the Bear Stearns and the Lehman Brothers of the past. Yeah, Their name is different, but now because nobody went to jail and nobody got in trouble over that whole deal, these guys have tripled down. They even got rid of the Dodd-Frank thing. I know you saw that. So on the leveraging, mm -hmm. and now it's just Katie barred the door and it's, it's unbelievable. But people need to take control of their finances and be proactive and get it the hell out of there so that, like I said, they're not the one without a chair when the music stops.
Yeah. And I can't tell you how many people I heard um, in the last decade's recession, the late 2000s recession, how many people basically lost their retirement um, because of what happened. I mean, it happened countless times. And I want to hear what's you know, so awesome, Roger, is that this program is opposite of the market. So as recession hits, as the stock market volatility creeps in, as interest rates go up or inflation increases, this program pays higher and higher and higher. Meaning wow. if there's any listeners that were around when, when uh, Jimmy Carter was around, these things paid 14 to 16%. Wow. Because they're opposite. It's opposite the market, which, which was tough for me because Roger, thinking about back in 08, 09, I'm walking into a party. Everybody's like, I'm get, I lost my job. I lost my five houses. Uh, I'm getting a divorce. My wife's leaving me. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I, I'm going to buy your house. I'm going to buy your car. <laughs> I'm going to buy your boat. What else do you got? You because, because if you had cash, it was king. And I wasn't in the subject. I wasn't left up to the subject of the aspect of the market. I'm sitting on the sidelines watching the bloodbath. And if we follow what Warren Buffett said, he said, when there's blood in the street, buy real estate. Right? right. That's That's what you got to do. So people have to be disciplined enough to say, look, I did well. And now I need to take a step back, put this on the sideline, make a smart decision for me and my family's future. I'm, I'm not saying don't buy stocks. I'm not saying don't do any of those investments. And if somebody wants to, by God, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to, for them to do it. Yeah. But just know what you're doing and think about it because when the market starts changing, you got to sell to a down market. It's not what the stock is worth. It's what somebody's willing to pay for it. And when you put money in the stock market, you risk losing it. But if you don't invest it right, then you're guaranteed to lose at least part of it in taxes. Yeah. So if you can eliminate at least that part of the risk, which we can help you do, then that'll you know minimize your risk when you're investing anyway. So, you know, and this sounds fantastic to me. And, you know, obviously, you know, taxes is something um, as a self-proclaimed anarchist, you know, taxes are something that I certainly do not want to pay. Um, so, you know, talking about this 401k that I have, if I wanted to put a little bit in this just to test it out, instead of dropping all of my money into this, how would that work? Is that even possible? Yeah. I mean, there's, there, the beautiful thing about these is there's no right or wrong answer, right? They're, they're literally built for everybody individually. It takes an account, you know, um, when you were born, right? You're how old you are. Uh, do you make money and are you insurable? Right. And unlike other kinds of plans where, you know, it's kind of a, yes, you are qualified or no, you aren't, right? Um, this has different tables and stuff so that there's people that have illnesses or ailments that still can do this program because you're buying such little ins amount of insurance that it doesn't make a big difference on what you pay. We're, we're, we're trying to strip this thing down and make it the, the leanest costs to do things. I, I can just give you an idea, a client, that Zach was handling here a couple of weeks ago, $360,000 rolling it out. They paid $742 a year to wrap that money and make it tax-free. $742 for $360. Wow. I know people that don't even pay that for term insurance. Yeah. You know what I mean? So imagine that. So the costs are so small. Now, if you were an insurance agent, would you want to sell that policy on $742? Of course not. I'm not making any sense for the point. You can't even pay the gas to go see them. I mean, right. so it's it, that's why you understand it's just not economically feasible for a lot of these guys in these industries to do it because they want to break off that big wad of money. The only problem is the only people that suffer from it are the, uh, the clients. Well, it certainly sounds like you guys have stumbled onto something just fantastic and incredible, almost like um, like this secret hidden you know box that uh, they've been hiding from us all these years, and you guys have found it and unlocked it. But we've actually been doing this a long time. We we did not realize how many people. The reason why we come on shows like we didn't realize how many people didn't know. We're trying to get the word out. It's just taking longer than we thought to educate the entire world. And it's amazing to get people and they're like, oh, well, this can't be, even though you got the codes and everything, I'm like, listen, honey, I was talking to somebody just today. I said, by the time you sign off, you sign all the IRS paperwork, you sign all the SEC paperwork, and you go through all the regulatories on the insurance side. If you don't know by then that this is a legitimate deal, I can't help you because right. you got 40 pages of stuff you got to get through in different sections and it's like, hey, 
it is what it is. It just is one of those things that we wish more people would know about and we wish more people would do, but who knows, right? Well, since you guys unlock this code, surely there are other firms, other companies who have unlocked this code as well. I mean, are there, is there good competition out there for this or is this pretty much locked down? If, if you're really rich, there is. I mean, so yeah, <laughs> we found there's probably a, a good dozen or so firms out there that'll do stuff like this. The problem is they work for the ultra wealthy. You've got to have a net worth of several million, $25 million or above for, the, for them to want to take you on as a client. So that's really where we found our niche, right? We're taking these same strategies because I mean, you can go read the tax code. In fact, it might be a fun little exercise for your listeners. If they want to go look up IRC 7702, that's Internal Revenue Code 7702. That's kind of the section where this whole thing starts. They can, they can see how hard it is to decipher. But one thing you'll notice in the code is it does not, it's not written. It doesn't say this section is for rich people only and this people is for, this is for the you know, normal folk. Or this section applies to Warren Buffett and Bill Gates and this applies to everyone else. No, the code applies to all of us. And so we have taken it, we've scaled it so that people who have ordinary incomes and are everyday Joes, like, like you know, us, we don't, we don't have a net worth of $50 million, we can use these same strategies. So yes, other firms do use these strategies, but they have a different market than we do. When a single mom comes to me and she's got $56,000 left from a divorce being dropped on her head by a, um, well, through a divorce, I'll just put it that way, with three kids and she has a blank on her on her resume for 12 years and is left with $56,000 and by putting in this program, does $311,000 in her first year in real estate. Yeah, that's what makes you feel good. When you get somebody that goes, oh, I, I've never done investing in my life. I don't know what to do. And with a, just a little bit of coaching and just a little bit of handholding, letting them get confident and being able to see what is it, what is a good deal? What makes it a good deal? What makes it a good investment? And having them get out there and go, listen, I don't need a broker for this. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of people out there, they do homework on their own deals, right? They watch TV, they go to things like the Money Show or Money 2020, mm -hmm. they, they, they're watching podcasts, they're doing all these things. And they go out there and they say, man, I can do a better job picking my investments than my guy does. And I don't have to pay him all these points and trade fees and money under management fees and blah, 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 blah. I can do it myself and pocket that money myself. And that's what we help people. We, we empower them to do that. So you mentioned the, uh, the, the single mom having 56 K is there a, a, a lower contribution limit? I mean, what if I only have five yeah. K? Yeah, absolutely. Look, somebody can put a couple hundred dollars a month in this thing. People don't have to have money rolled over. I mean, people are using this to pay for college education programs because they can put money away and then they can take the money out without having a taxable event. And then they can have their kid not have a student loan. Um, we have people that do this, start off with a few hundred dollars for the retirement plans. We have people that put a thousand, five thousand a month, 10,000. Don't get me crazy, but hundred thousand a month. You know, we have people that roll over $10,000 from an old IRA. We have people that roll over $100,000 for an old IRA, millions of dollars from an old IRA. It wow. doesn't matter. It's literally, there's no wrong answer. It's built specifically to the individual. What do they want to do? What can they do? And what are their goals? And with that in mind, this tailor-made program gets fitted to them so that they can take advantage of this program. In fact, that story behind that 19 and a half year old girl, she put in $75 a month back 20 something years ago, she's just getting ready to finish up. Guess what, Roger? She's got millions of dollars in her program. You would, you couldn't believe what $75 does that early compounded over time with making smart decisions. Good for it's her. amazing. It's, I know it's great for her. And, and the, we tell people start early, steady wins the race, right? It's not this big smash of cash but putting in a little bit, you got to pay yourself, right? Your bills are always there. I have a philosophy. I pay my heavenly father first. I pay myself second. I pay my taxes and my bills third, because if you don't stop to pay yourself, when are you going to put money aside to retire? Your bills are always there. You know, yep. I keep telling my creditors to go away, stop sending me the bills. 
and they keep sending me it the next month. You know, they yeah, don't I tried that with the IRS. They said, yeah. nope, can't do that. They, these guys do not listen to me, and I don't know what it is. So one thing you mentioned, I don't know, half an hour ago or so, and I meant to get back to it then and just forgot, you mentioned that your funds stay completely liquid, that you can you retain access to those funds at any time. How does that work? Because, you know, I invest in something. Obviously, they need to hang on to that money for a while. Yeah, so when the money goes into the program, it's like a glorified bank account. So they'll, they'll go in there, they go online. The, it, when they initially go into their portal, it's sitting there in their account, just like you would have an online um, bank account, right? You put in your information, you put in your passcode, couple identifiers so that somebody knows it's you, you want to send money out. So instead of setting up a, a brokerage with TD Ameritrade as you see, if you sell a stock or if you sell a bond or you sell a piece of real estate based on how long you, you keep it, you'll pay longer or short-term capital gains. But when we put that money into the insurance contract and they buy that same stock or bond or real estate, they're not subject to that tax. So they're gonna act as the fiduciary on behalf of the insurance company. So when they set up that account at TD Ameritrade, it's not them that set up that account, it's the insurance contract. They just worked on behalf of the insurance contract, excuse me. When they buy a piece of real estate and escrow is opened up, they get the wire instructions, they wire that money into escrow, who owns that house? The insurance contract owns that house. When they sell that house, they sell it on behalf of the insurance contract. So the money gets absorbed 100% tax-free. That We never control the money. The client is always in control of the money. It's liquid from literally a couple days, just like a wire hits, it's got to clear the system. So it's available to them. It's immediately available to them and they can invest in anything they want, which is a big difference between an IBC. And IBC, when you put money in, you don't have access to your capital or very little for the first few, first few years, okay, number one. Number two, you're buying an insurance policy. No doubt about it. That's what you're buying. You're not buying a wrapper. You're buying an insurance policy. And because of that, you have a high cost of insurance. Mm -hmm. High commissions. At, which equal high commissions. When you borrow money out, your borrow rate is higher than your earned rate. Sure, you still earn, it, earn money on it as if it never left but that borrow rate is higher than your earned rate. So you have to make sure you pay it back and you have to figure out that cost into your investment. Then on top of it, they're not, they don't lie to you, but they're not honest. They say, oh, well, your profits can come back. Right. Well, there's such a small amount of room in those IBCs that it'll fill up in that glass. And then everything that pours over that glass, you're taxed on it as ordinary income. So, like I said, it's not quite a lie, but it's not entirely true because the amount of profit that can go in there is so little, it's not going to do anything for your retirement mm. career, right? Right. So not only that, but you're limited on things you can invest in. You're limited on things you can do. Uh, you got to jump through all these hoops. And then what they do is they put these massive surrender expenses on this that say that basically in a few years, when you realize that this product that we sold you isn't what we told you it was, and you want to get out of it, it's going to cost you almost your entire amount of cash value to quit it. Thank you very much for your money. Move on to the next sucker, right? right? Whereas all this is, is a wrapper. And let me tell you something that's great. That's inside of the investment grade insurance contract baked inside of it is long-term care. 70% of all Americans will need long-term care. Less than 10% have a plan. So chronic, disability, or some kind of long-term care needs, mm -hmm. they'll need. Inside, baked inside the plan, they will take $20,000 up to 24% of your death benefit, not your cash. 24% of your death benefit up to $20,000 a month. And if you get sick, it'll pay the bill for you. Wow. Which is amazing. So, nice. if, so what ends up happening is, Somebody goes, puts this money in, they have a several million dollar death benefit. Somebody gets sick for 10 months at 20 grand. They just take 4 million, subtract 200,000, and they pass on $3.8 million tax free. It's, it really is. It's not one of those things that's better than you think it is or too good to be true. It is too good to be true. It, 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 it is a program made by a group of people that wanted all the benefits of everything that they could do positive with none of the repercussions of anything that could happen to you negative. 
because this was going to be their plan and all your listeners can be in that plan too. And once they, if somebody has an IBC, they'll drop it in a minute to convert into this. And if you ever saw this, you will tell all your friends, you're crazy to be in a qualified plan. You can do this and invest in all those same stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, oil and gas, deeds, notes, um, metals, right? Gold and silver, precious stones, privately held company, pri publicly traded companies, and you can do it all 100% tax-free. Like wow. Zach said, why would you do anything taxed if you can invest that same amount of money yep. entirely tax-free? It just makes no sense. And everybody watching there, we will be more than happy to put it into an illustration, take their exact situation, and not based on what you're doing, Roger, or me, or Zach, or anybody else, but based on exactly what they're doing what it would look like for them. And we'd be happy to do that. And then it just, they'll get it. I mean, they don't get it like that, Roger. They get it like that. I mean, you can, <laughs> you can see it. It's, it's your numbers. And you're like, holy crap. Why, one of the most of the, the comments we get is, why doesn't everybody do this? And my answer is, yeah, why doesn't everybody do this? We're working on it. Exactly. Because yeah, <laughs> right. I haven't talked to them yet. <laughs> well, I'm definitely going to be sending you an email tomorrow with my numbers and uh, see what you come back with. It, it sounds fascinating. Right. And I'd love to have a follow-up so you can get back with your people because, you know, you will be blown away. I mean, you, I almost want to tape a collage of the comments. Holy cow, this is all. <laughs> hey, Morgan, come look at this. Can you believe it? Why am I? I mean, it's amazing. And we yeah. love it. You know, it's, I get the funniest responses when you let people see it and it's like, look, this isn't a guess. This isn't an estimate. This is showing what you're going to do. And so well, I'm, I love that. I'm so glad you guys stumbled on this and you explained it in such a way that, you know, like I said, I'm not a dumb guy, but I'm certainly not a financial whiz by any stretch of the imagination. And you explain this in a way that even I can understand it. So that, that that's been a huge help. And I really appreciate that. Um, if you guys are okay with it, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, jumping over to some uh, questions from the audience. Yeah, for sure. All right. So first, um, we're going to start off with Mark. He says, how do I get my money out of the policy and use it when I want to? Yeah. Well, uh, Mark, good question. So it's actually a pretty simple process, right? So you have your insurance contract and you have the insurer and you're going to have a portal online. You can log in online. You can fill out a one page form. You say, hey, this is how much I want. Your bank, you have a bank account that's connected to the account, and then they just wire it within one, two days, your money's in your checking account, and then you use your debit card or a check or go withdraw. Or, or they can send it to a vendor. You just put your vendor, your wire, your SWIP code, whatever. You know, just like if you were opening up escrow or you needed to send it to TD Ameritrade, they've got their, you know, wire instructions. You zip it in. They know it comes mm -hmm. from you. There it is, ready to go. It's, yeah, it's I want easier to... than dealing with a bank, for crying out loud, right? Yeah, I once had to borrow some uh, some money from a 401k years ago and uh, talk about a pain in the neck. I mean, you that was the most pain. Hey, Roger, I'm so glad you said that. You think it's your money? Good luck. Go go try to go get it. Go find right. out how, how not it your money your money it is. Yeah, right? been there, done that. It was a, it was a nightmare for sure. Now, I finally got it a couple of weeks later. And then later. you got to pay it back. And if you don't, oh, yeah. you early withdrawal penalty. And if you don't mm -hmm. pay it back, then it comes as ordinary income. It's a nightmare. It's it's yep. It was a pain. So here's one that's a little different. Um, being Free Talk Live, we have a lot of crypto uh, cryptocurrency watch uh, viewers. Uh, the question is, if you own cryptocurrency, is it taxable at any point? And if so, at what point? And how can you protect crypt crypto assets? And can you protect crypto assets um, in your program? So one thing you want me to take this? Yeah, yeah. One thing that you can do on crypto as well as regular stock is that you can liquidate your positions so we wait until we have the program set up, right? They're approved, the whole nine yards, and it's ready to go. Now you liquidate your crypto position, right? Mm -hmm. Comes in in the form of cash. It clears. Go back out the next day, buy your same position. What's the difference? The difference is when you had it before and you realize it, you pay tax. Now the insurance contract owns it. You don't pay tax. I had a guy that had $107,000 of Facebook stock. We rolled it in. It was right before Zuckerberg was getting ready to go before Congress. We set it up. He liquidated. Wouldn't you know, his same position only cost him now 93000 But he bought it all. But the difference is now he doesn't own Facebook himself. He owns Facebook as the insurance contract. So guess what? Let that baby hit. 
300, 400, $500 a share, you love it. You know why? Because when that sells, that baby is all tax free. Nice. It get nice. So yeah, so, I mean, there's work throughs, but these are great. These are fantastic questions because people are starting to say, now the only thing that's a bugaboo is if somebody has a house. I can't just take your house, move it into this plan and make it tax free. That's self dealing and we're all going to go to jail. So right. sorry, I love you, but not that much. But you would have to liquidate it so it doesn't really work on properties that way. We have seen people do it. We have facilitated when people have sold the house and bought the house like they sell it to a friend or a relative. But basically what it is on that kind of real estate play is they're really taking the money that they're using on the down payment. Now, I know people will ask this question. If I buy a house and I only have enough to say buy half of it, what happens, right? So they want to buy a $200,000 house. They have $100,000 in their IGIC. Well, now when they buy that home as an investment, half of it is owned by the IGIC tax-free. The other half they own tax. Mm. So if they have a tenant in there and they're making $2,000 a month, $1,000 goes in their program tax-free and they're left with the other $1,000 that they'll pay longer short-term capital gains depending on the transaction. Gotcha. Pretty cool. Whatever percentage is owned, by the contract, that's the percentage that is tax free. Beautiful. So we have a question from Tommy and he asks, is this legal advice? It isn't surprising to hear that the tax code was written to allow for the rich to escape parts of it, but it also seems pretty wild that it would even be accessible to the average person. Yeah, but there's a lot of things that seem wild. I mean, Think about this, Tommy. Back 51 years ago, something came out called self-directed IRAs, right? I w I'm sitting there and I'm rolling over $4 million for a client 30 years ago. I get a call from the vice president of Merrill Lynch, not, not of a division, the vice president. Like, here's the president. Here's his name, right? He's the second guy in charge. And he says, hey, you know, what you're doing is illegal. I said, no, it's not. He goes, I'm going to call the FBI and the IRS on you. And I said, okay, I'll hold. He said, did you hear what I said? I'm going to call him. I said, yeah, I'll hold. Did you know that this has been a law for 20 years now? So here's a guy in the business that didn't realize that this program was going to come and wreck the financial investment world as you knew it, because people say, I'm smart enough to do my own investments. I don't need to pay you to lose money. I can lose money on my own, right? And so this whole thing rocked the world. Today, it's 51 years old. 20, 30 years ago, it was illegal. Now, nobody would think of it. Why? Because marketers took it out there and educated people. We're trying to do the same thing. We're not trying to keep this in our coat. We want people to know about it. And this will be as popular as the self-directed IRA, give it another 10, 15 years. I hope it's a half-life of that. I hope it's a lot shorter, Roger. I hope more people learn about it. And I hope more people do it. But unfortunately, you got to have the education and know how to do so. Yeah. So I think we've got time for uh, one more question. And this, uh, this comes from Matt. And he asks, I've been married for several years and I'm thinking of getting a divorce. Can I still do this sort of asset protection planning? Yes. Okay. And we're sorry. So, so what, right. So what kind of implications would that have? Would his, if he does this now and gets a divorce later, would she be available, able to take some of that money from him? Well, I would you know, for, I can tell you what I've seen personally, but Zach can defer to. So it, there are a minority of states are community property states. If he's in a community property state, then part of the life insurance contract would belong to the spouse for the part that they were married. So it depends on what state he's in for part of it. If he's not in a community property state, which is I think 38 states and in Alaska, you can either opt in or opt out when you get married, then it's gonna be a little bit different. But if he is contemplating getting a divorce, we can talk to him specifically and we can help him set a plan to, and, you know, to kind of think ahead and plan for that so that it doesn't have negative consequences when the courts are dividing his assets at the divorce. Sadly enough, uh, we have three clients right now that are that in that exact situation. And it's unfortunate. And I say sad because I think it's always sad when that happens. But yeah. um, you got to prepare for it. And there's no sense to stick your head in the sand and say that, it, you know, act like it's not happening. It's happening. Right. No. And so, like Zach said, for the time that they had it while they were married, he's doing it right now. It's going to be hard for a judge to say, oh, yeah, she gets half of that. 
So now is a great time for him to do it if he was going to do it. Okay. Well, good. You heard that, Matt. And uh, so I just want to thank you, Nick and, and Zach, for, for doing this with us. I've really enjoyed this. I've learned personally a ton. I'm going to be sending you guys an email tomorrow to uh, give you my number so we can start looking at this for my wife and I um, and seeing what we can do. Is there anything else that you want to uh, say to our listeners before we, we finish this up? Yeah, yeah, one important thing. If somebody's listening and would like to see what this could do for them, and honestly, they owe it them. I mean, why would you not want to see what this could do for you, mm -hmm. right? Um, some of the toughest clients that we've ever had are our best proponents because they're they're so hard-headed and then they go, golly, and I'm like, yeah, you almost, if we weren't patient, you almost missed out on this. Right. And we remind them. But if they go to fortunefirm.com forward slash contact, fortunefirm.com forward slash contact, and they fill that out, hurry up and fill that out because the the sooner you get to it, the sooner we will get to you. We will call you from our office. We will have an individual one-on-one -on -one consultation with you. Run down the program or other things that we do. Feel free to ask us questions and see if this or any of the other things, excuse me, that we do are complete fit for you. I don't know what it is. I have had hiccups constantly. <laughs> you scare me, Roger. I have hiccups constantly. I don't know what it is, but... I've, had, I've been trying to disguise it, but I just couldn't there. But but honestly, it's just, and I can't get it to stop. I've been trying to like hold my breath quietly and whack myself and it won't go away. But, but there's no charge for the call. There's no charge for the hiccup and there's no charge for the call. So we would love to hear from them. Um, we're, I think we're, we have an amazing team, you will hear. And uh, we've been doing this a long time and there's nobody that can say that you won't find any complaints about us because – we spend the time with the individual to make things built for them. And we spend the time so they know what they have and how it works and how it benefits from them. Because look, if this isn't a fit for you, fine. It's okay. You know, we'll be friends. But if it is, then by golly, you should know how it works. I'm tired of hearing all these people say, I bought this thing, but I don't get what it does. No, you should know what it does. We're happy to help you. People will tell you and you'll read. They're always able to get a hold of us. Don't send us Harry Potter emails, nice and short, what you're interested in. Make yourself available for a quick five minute phone call and we will get you on your way because we love our clients. We love hearing success stories and uh, we're excited to work with your people because we want more and more people to get out there. Like I said, we just didn't realize how many people don't get it. And we're, right. we are saddened by how many people will default to an IBC because their marketing is so superior. They're spending tons of money because they're making millions of dollars in commissions. So that's what you see online. And that's what people gravitate to. And it's just an inferior product. It just is. It, so we want people to have the best programs available and we would love to work with you guys and have a little fun with you guys and, and uh, watch you guys make money. So well, I'm excited to learn more and definitely excited to always make money. So uh, I'll be talking to you guys soon. And uh, for any of our listeners, again, that was fortunefirm.com slash contact, fortunefirm.com slash contact. Reach out to Nick and, uh, and Zach here. Um, let them know what your, what your status is, and uh, they'll be glad to help you out. Nick, Zach, thank you so much for joining us. I really enjoyed thank this. I sure appreciate, Roger, you taking the time. Look forward to working for all you guys. Thanks, guys. Take care.